Hi, everybody. Today we're going to do the solving equation notes part B. This is going to be quadratic equations and also um, radical equations. So let's go ahead and talk about what quadratic equations look like. <clears throat> they look like ax squared plus bx plus c. If they're set equal to zero, this is considered standard form. Okay, so there's several ways you can go about solving these quadratic equations. The first is to solve by factoring, which we know how to do. You can undo or extract square roots. You could use the quadratic formula, which is, in my opinion, the least favorable way. <laughs> but some people like it. Um, a reminder, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, an example of this we'll just do real quickly. If you had like 3x squared minus 2x equals 2, then you could bring everything to one side and then you want to define a, b, and c. So a is 3, b is negative 2, and c is negative 2. And then remember, all you have to do is just substitute it in. So x equals negative b, so 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a, so 2 times 3. So then all you have to do is simplify. So 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 24 all over 6. If you continue to simplify, you get 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 6. But you're still not done because you've got to keep going. Remember that 28 is like 7 times 4, thinking about the largest perfect square that goes in. So you have 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 7. So really that's like 2 times root 7 over 6. And then finally, you can divide each one of those terms by 2. So hopefully you remember how to do the quadratic formula. We won't do much of it, but it is another tool to have in your toolbox in case you can't figure out how to solve. <clears throat> when you can't factor, you can't undo the square roots, you don't want to use the quadratic formula, you can then complete the square, which is my favorite way. Now, completing the square is something that we're gonna do for the whole year. So you wanna make sure that you become comfortable with this. We're gonna start out easy. So let's say we have x squared minus eight x plus five, and that's set equal to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and write out some steps on the side as we go. So my first step is to scoot over the C term. So this is very technical language here. So you're gonna go ahead and scoot over C. So I'm gonna label the steps as I go. So I'm gonna have x squared minus eight x. I'm scooting over C and that's set equal to zero. Step two is to make sure you have a coefficient of 1 for x squared. Well, let's say x squared term. If not, factor out a from only the first two terms. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a little while. We already have, um, for step two, we already have a one sitting here, so we don't have to do this step. Step three, you're gonna take half of B and square it. And then add slash subtract that term. Okay, so now I'm going to do that. 
So I have to take half of B. So half of 4, or no, I'm sorry, negative 8 is negative 4. So I'm going to take x squared minus 8x. I'm going to take half of B, and I'm going to add it squared. Then what I have to remember to do is I what, to keep this balanced, whatever I do on the inside, I have to do the opposite on the outside. So for example, when I have half of B, which is negative 4 squared, I get plus 16 here. If I'm adding 16 inside, I have to subtract 16 on the outside, so that way I can keep this equation balanced. So if I add 16 here and I subtract 16 here, it's zero. It goes away. It hasn't really changed anything. It's just changed the look. Step four, you are going to factor and simplify. So the whole reason we complete the square is so that we are able to now factor. So this becomes 16 here, right? So if you think about x squared minus 8x plus 16, this is a perfect square trinomial. So now, this is step three. You could also label. So now when I get down to step four, to factor this trinomial, I'm going to get x minus 4 squared. And then I have this minus 11 when I simplify that. <clears throat> the reason why I like to write mine as negative 4 squared is because that's what it factors to each time. Okay, so now in step 5, the final step is just to solve for x. So this part is easy. This is the part we know how to do. So I'm going to add over the 11. And then I have to take the square root of both sides, which is going to give me plus or minus the square root of 11. And then finally, I just have to add over the 4. So I get 4 plus or minus the square root of 11 as my final answer. All right, let's go ahead and try it again. But this time, it is going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm still going to use those same steps. So let's look at 4x squared plus 8x plus 1 equals 0. So step one is to scoot over the C term. So once I scoot that over, this is what I'm left with. Then I have to factor out the four because in step two, it says make sure that you have a coefficient of one. I don't, so I have to take out the four. I'm left with x squared plus two x, leave a space, plus one equals zero. Step three, I have to take half of b and I have to add it squared. So now half of two is one. I'm adding one squared. If I add one squared here, what I'm really adding inside is plus one. But the thing you have to remember is that there's this four on the outside. So this four is really being distributed to that one. So 4 times 1 is 4. I'm adding 4 on the inside, therefore I have to subtract the 4 on the outside. You have to do the opposite. Step 4 is to now factor. So this has become a perfect square trinomial. It's going to factor to x plus 1 squared. I have minus 3 here when I simplify. I will go ahead and add over the 3 and divide by 4 in the same step. So now I have 3 fourths. And at that point, I want to take the square root of both sides. Now this works out good for me because this is a perfect square in the denominator. So I end up with x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Bring over the 1, and I have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 is a final answer. So completing the square is going to take a lot of work, but you're just going to keep working at it. Um, until you're good at it. Okay, the next and the last type of equation that we're going to talk about is a radical equation. So this is the sixth type. These are called radical equations. So they have square roots. Okay, now the thing with these is that you must check for extraneous solutions. Okay, so there's a couple situations here that you could encounter. 
one is when you only have one radical. Okay, so when you only have one radical, there are some different steps. The steps for one radical are these. One, you isolate the radical. So you get it all by itself on one side. Two, you square both sides. And three, you solve and check. Okay, you always have to check these solutions. So let's go ahead and try an example. Let's say I have the square root of 3x minus 2 minus x equals negative 2. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is I want to add over the x. I want to isolate it. So step one is to isolate. So I have the square root of 3x minus 2 equals x minus 2. So now I have to square both sides. Okay, that's step two. So when I square both sides, if you square square root, you create a perfect square. So you're left with 3x minus 2. Here, when I square this, it's a binomial. So if I square a binomial, it's like x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I'm going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, this is just to a basic quadratic equation. I'm going to go ahead and solve and check. So I have to get everything to one side, which is this. And then I can um, factor this. So I'm going to get x minus 6 times x minus 1. Go ahead, set those equal to 0 using the zero product property. And I'm going to get 1 and 6 for solutions. But now, the third step says solve, but it also says to check. So now I have to check my solution. So to check, remember you just plug in. So I'm going to have 3 times 1 minus 2 minus 1 equals negative 2. So this is going to give me the square root of 1 minus 1 <coughs> equals negative 2. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 does not equal negative 2, so this is a bad solution. 1 does not work. It's called an extraneous solution. Okay, it doesn't work. If I go ahead and check 6, you do 3 times 6 minus 2 minus 6 should equal negative 2. This is going to give me uh, 18 minus 2, which is 16. Squared is 16 is 4. 4 minus 6 is indeed negative 2. This is a good solution. So my only solution that is a good solution is x equals 6. Okay, we have one more um, situation to go. I'm going to go ahead and turn the page, though, because I'm going to need a lot of space for this. The last scenario is when you have two radicals. Okay, so this is a longer process. So here are the steps for this one. This time you're going to have two radicals. The first thing you do is you isolate one radical. Then, step two, you square both sides. At that point, you're going to get rid of one radical, but you'll still have another one left. So then it's like you have to start all over again. So then you isolate the remaining radical. And then step four, you again square both sides. Finally, step five, you solve and check. And again, you have to check your solutions for this. All right, so let's go ahead and try to do this. Um, let's start off with the square root of 3x plus 4 minus the square root of x plus 5, and that's set equal to 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate one radical. I don't want to deal with a negative, so I'm going to add that one to the other side. So now I will have the square root of x plus 5 plus 1 on the right side. Step 2, I square both sides. So I'm going to square this, and I'm going to square this. This is going to give me 3x plus 4. It's going to create a perfect square. Over here, though, what I have to remember is that I have to multiply this binomial by itself. So that squared is really what that means. It means multiply it by itself. So I have to FOIL. 
So when I multiply those together, I get x plus 5. So that radical goes away. But here, when I distribute and I multiply it by 1, I get plus the square root of x plus 5. Now I work over here. So 1 times this is plus the square root of x plus 5. Then I do 1 times 1 to get 1. So now I have to combine like terms. Okay, so I have x and then plus 6, but then I have 2 root x plus 5. So I get plus 2 root x plus 5. So you'll see it's like I'm starting all over again. I have to isolate the radical. So I'm going to subtract the x. I'm going to subtract the 6. That's going to give me 2x minus 2 equals 2 to, um, times root x plus 5. I want to isolate the radical if possible. So here I can see I can divide by 2 everywhere, and I won't get any fractions. Let's say, for example, that, that this 2 was really a 3. If I was to divide by 3, it would get messier. So I would just leave it, and it would be part of the squaring. So now I'm on step 3. I've isolated the radical again. It's time to square both sides again. So now I square both sides. I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's going to be equal to x plus 5. Then I have to bring everything to one side to solve. So x squared minus 3x minus 4. I can factor this, which is good. So x minus 4 times x plus 1. If I couldn't factor it, at that point, I'd have to use like completing the square or quadratic formula to continue. I get x equals negative 1 and positive 4. So again, I have to check. So to check, you plug it into the original. So 3 times negative 1 plus 4 minus negative 1 plus 5. Let's see if that equals 1. This is going to give me the square root of 1 minus the square root of 4. 1 minus um, 2 is negative 1, which is not 1. So that means negative 1 is extraneous. Then you check 4. So you do the same thing. You plug in 4. Now I will know if you checked because you'll either know it's extraneous or not. So you don't have to show me the check. You can just plug it in in your head. If I plug in 4, it is a good solution. So my only solution here is x equals 4. So now you know how to solve all of the types of equations that I'm going to expect from you. All right. Happy homework.